There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with the one and only Dr. Elliot, excuse me, Dr. Elliot Justin. Dr. Elliot, how are you, my brother? I'm good. You can call me Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, <laughs> a.k.a. the Ringmaster. Uh, so he is uh, an esteemed medical colleague, friend. We just met actually today, but I'm familiar with him through Susan Braxton. Uh, he's on a mission for better sex and sexual health for everyone. He is an author and hist- a history enthusiast. That's a whole other topic for a different day. Uh, an ER specialist, healthcare tech consultant, entrepreneur, and he's founded multiple health startups, and he's now promoting sexual wellness with firm tech, which he likes to call sexology, which I love. Um, Doc, uh, before I do, to, and by the way, today is September 14th, 2023. But before I get into what we're going to talk about, which again is sexology and sex technology, um, where what is your opinion right now of like where mankind is going? I'm kind of asking my show guests now, uh, when they come on the show, just to kind of get your opinion, like, are you a buyer of mankind or a seller? I love mankind, but I think, but man, but mankind is uh, facing significant threat from authoritarianism today. Yeah, you know, I, my concern is, uh, look, Jay, I'm 70. I don't know how old you are. My children and my grandchildren, my concern is we'll never live with the type of freedom of thought, speech, and action I that agree. I've enjoyed. Right. Uh, and, that, and that disturbs me. And you and I are going to talk about sex tech, and even that has a significant negative side that we can get to at the end of the discussion. I'd rather talk positively about all the great things that are going on to improve human sexual performance. But in the end, if you can turn something on, you can turn it off. And that's disturbing as well, too. Plus, we're already seeing in countries like China and a few places in Africa the, the implementation of social credit scores involving right. sexual behaviors. Yeah, it's absolutely insane, dude. So we're, we 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 drink from the same fountain. Uh, I'm in 100 percent agreement with you. By the way, you don't look 70. You're only as old as you feel, right? <laughs> exactly. No, I would have never guessed. Yes. I'm I'm almost 53, but that's awesome, man. Good for you, man. Thank uh, you. And we do definitely agree on the same things. And I'm 100 percent in in the in the same camp as you. Um, you know, my children are 15 and 13, uh, sophomore in high school, eighth grader, and um, man. I, I, it's bleak, bro. It's bleak. My, my, my children are growing. I have grandkids too, but my, my children are growing and they're all afraid to speak their minds at work. Yeah, it's insane. It's literally about, insane. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, right. I mean, it's not the purpose of this podcast here today, but uh, technology has enslaved people. Uh, obviously, like you said, the overlords uh, have encouraged it. And most people now today call them just kids under the age of 25, they don't read. You know, oh, their, their, yeah, their sure. answers come from the devices, which we know lied to them. You know, they asked the devices f- for the answers. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> what do you think you're going to get when there's people out there say, let them eat bugs, right? I mean, you know, <laughs> yes, there you go. Yes, exactly. Well, also, you know, in, in medicine, of course, of my career, we went from physicians being independent to following best practices. Well, best practices yeah. sounds like a nice idea, but it's actually an, an Orwellian concept. That's right. Best practice means that someone else is telling you what to do. What they and do. someone comes up with a better idea, but they don't like the idea, whether for reasons of money, power, status, you're not gonna, you're not gonna learn about the idea. Exactly we saw right. what a disaster that was during the, what I call, probably agrees, the pandemic. Yeah, well, of course, of course. And now it's trust the science. And now all the young people have also been brainwashed into, well, you got to do it. Everybody else is doing it. You know, it's the go along, get along. The Orwellian right. mindset. Exactly. Yeah, it's insane. If, and right. if you don't say the right thing, you, you could lose your job or lose your status. Or, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, the truth is, Doc, and you know this as an entrepreneur and I'm a serial entrepreneur as well. You can't tell we cannot teach our kids now to become wage slaves. As great and as noble of a cause as it might be. 
And, you know, sure, maybe you got to get four to six years of experience in the workforce and be a wage slave and learn the game. But you got to teach entrepreneurship. You got to teach taking ownership of your life because you're right, man. You are literally now a servile compliance slave. You have no ability to say anything, to speak anything. You're right. You just literally lose your job. I talked to a guy last night who was a very high level anesthesiologist at the Cleveland Clinic and he refused the you know what. And he was one day away from being let go. And he said, I didn't give a flying you know what. And then they got to stay in the fourth court, circuit court of appeals. I think it was in New York the day before. But he was like, you know what? It sucked for me because I wanted to be bounced out. <laughs> he was like, I was actually looking forward to not doing anesthesiology after 27 years as a board certified anesthesiologist. But yeah, man, we could go all day. Let's get into this. So okay, let's talk about sex. More fun. Yeah, as as a previously emergency doctor and obviously very successful, how did you get into sex technology? Well, um, I've always felt that this short of a heart attack or a stroke, there's no emergency that concerns a man short of a of, of a limp dick. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I started getting involved in medical technology consulting in 2015 after I sold an emergency medicine company. And I was working with a doctor at the University of Utah on a catheter to regulate blood pressure after stroke. Because if, if, if blood pressure goes too high, you get more yep. bleeding in the brain. If blood pressure goes down, more tissue is destroyed. Sure, a sure. very complicated catheter. And a urology professor, uh, Dr. James O'Talling, uh, heard me talk about this with this other doctor and said, gee, I want to count the number of nocturnal erections that men have because there's a leading indicator of vascular health. Well, right. that kind of took me aback because I didn't know that. Everyone knows about morning wood. The partners know about it too. I guess they get poked. But I didn't know, uh, <laughs> I didn't know that, that, that the erections in the middle of the night were significant. So, and not only significant, that's an association, but a leading indicator. So let me emphasize this. A leading indicator means that before your a man has a heart attack or a stroke, before a man's hemoglobin A1C goes up indicating significant diabetes, it's far more likely than not that that man's number of nocturnal erections will go down. Right. So, uh, Jay, how many nocturnal erections do you have? Man, I, I count as of this morning, it, it seemed like it started at about four in the morning and didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're, you're in your fifties. You should you should be having four or five. Although we really don't know because the data goes back to goes back to the 1980s. Anyway. I thought was we can do better than count the number of nocturnal erections. If we embed sensors into a cock ring, we can then count the dura- measure the duration and firmness of erections while a man is having sex, as well as count the number of nocturnal erections. And if we measure the duration and firmness of erections while a man is having sex, men can now measure the impact of diseases. How bad is my diabetes? Right. Medications. Is this SSRI antidepressant or this antihypertensive drug killing my cock? Recreational drugs. Um, exercise, diet, supplements, girlfriend or boyfriends against your, against your sexual performance. So this could be, this become profoundly valuable. So I, I uh, most urologists though don't know anything about <laughs> cock, cock rings, which kind of took me aback. So I'm meeting with doc, this doctor hotel at the University of Utah, sitting with six of his colleagues, resident, uh, fairly residents, fellows, and 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 urologists. Said, do, any, do, do any guys use cock rings? It was zero. Uh, I said, well, would you recommend cock rings to men who have ED? Because uh, it, it, it is a, you know, a solution. And they said, yeah, we just tell, them, tell these guys to go on Amazon. My point to them was, well, Unreal. you go to Amazon, you get something, one, that's sponsored, and two, that's cheap. And there's 3,000. Uh, How the hell do you pick the right ones? <laughs> yeah, right. So, so I, I was um, – the challenge here, though, Jay, was to come up with a cock ring that could be worn overnight. Now, wow. you and I talked about cock rings earlier before we got on the call. Cock rings to me, they're like a novelty. I've been married 35 years. I try to have sex every day. Uh, my wife is into sex too. And we buy That's like awesome. one or two cock rings a year. And we get rid of them. Because you use them once or twice. They're, they're uncomfortable. They pinch. They've been made right, the right. same way right. for 150 years. Mass manufactured silicone ring. So I, my wife had a stress ball on her, on her desk. I thought, do I have a cock ring that could be worn overnight? It's got to be made out of, out of an elastomer, not as soft as a stress ball, but something right. in that in, in that direction. So I knew I wanted to make the cock, our cock ring out of an elastomer. Uh, and then I knew that the cock ring had to be something that could be easy on, easy off. Because you and I, I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I weigh 155 pounds. You probably are a lean guy too. I can look down, I, I can see my dick. Most guys my age, most guys your age, look down, they see fucking belly. 
Now, so you, you, you and I, you, you and I are fit, but I, you know. So if I can see, if a guy, and I was trying, I was discussing this problem with a friend of mine here here in Bozeman, who's in his fifties, he's diabetic, he's overweight, takes multiple meds, and he he's struggles with cock rings because they yeah. they pinch and they're uncomfortable. And he can't see his dick. So right. if you're a guy who's like had two puffs of pot, two shots of bourbon, you're worried about your erection. <laughs> Your girlfriend is there, you know, is it going to happen tonight? Did I just get wrist fatigue for, you know, for, for, for nothing? Or, or, and the guy then has to find, he has to interrupt sexual activity, look for his ring, get lube on it, have a hard on before right. you put it on, because you have to have a hard on, otherwise yeah, of it chokes, chokes off the erection. So I thought, gee, what, what, oh, I was scratching my wife's back after, after she took a bra off. I think that most, I, I bet that half the sex in the United States between heterosexual couples is a guy scratching his, his wife or girlfriend's back. It's, it's, why? Because the silicone in, in the bra pinches the skin. Silicone makes skin adapt to it. Elastomers adapt to us. So sure. I, I, I looked, looked at the floor and saw my wife's bra on the ground and thought, oh, a, a bra is a ring that opens and closes. Women don't put bras on over their head. It closes with a hook. Right. And I thought, duh, let's put a hook into a cock ring. Have you seen our cock ring? Uh, I have, yeah, I have. I mean, okay. I saw it was with Susan, and I wa- we looked at it online and stuff. Yeah, just went mute. <laughs> I think when you touch your, you're like me, you're all over the place. When you touch your headset, it just knocked out the microphone. Nothing. Uh. Uh-uh. It's probably the headset. It's probably too nice of a headset, man. (laughs) There you go. Now I hear it. You're back. You're back. Oh, you were. No, actually you were, and now it's gone again. There? There you go. (laughs) Okay. Because I touched the button. That's me. That's my fault. Okay. My bad. Yeah. All good. Yeah, so just pick back up where you were. Yeah, so uh, I saw this hook on the floor, but open and closed. Now, so now a guy who's challenged can get this thing easy on, easy off, it's safe. And because our, our cock ring is made out of a soft elastomer, it can be worn for hours. It doesn't block the arterial flow in. It just constrains the venous return. So you can actually but, wear it overnight, literally, while you're sleeping. You can sleeping. wear it overnight, and you can wear it during sex. Correct. That's awesome. So you can just literally wake up when you get the morning wood and like, hey, baby, it's time to get busy. <laughs> you could, yeah. Well, we actually have... We have a couple of women who said, gee, I'm trying to get pregnant. Can we actually get an addition to the app so I get an alert on my smartwatch? It buzzes so I can bang my husband at 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow, because, that's pretty awesome. Because I want to get pregnant because now because I'm yeah. fertile now. Yeah, that's a, whole other, that's a whole other conversation. The environment is so <laughs> contaminated. Nobody can even have kids. <laughs> yeah. uh, dude, you said so much. There's so much to unpack there. First off, I got to go back and you were like, urologists know nothing about cock rings. They don't actually know anything about therapeutic testosterone either. But that's another podcast for another day. Um, but yeah, uh, all of this is amazing. Um, there's a lot of stuff here that I want to, like, like I said, unpack. But just the idea of cock ring, what – you know, obviously you're a professional in this realm and I've always been interested in this question. Um, again, with the environment so contaminated with endocrine disrupting chemicals and phthalates and plastics and fuck dude, everything, the EMF, the electromagnetic, dirty electromagnetic frequencies. I mean, there's a guy I just interviewed three weeks ago, Justin Franson said that if you drive a Tesla or any electric vehicle and you sit in the car while it's charging, you're taking 10 years minimum off your lifespan. <laughs> So there's well, just so much, there's so much <laughs> hitting us that yeah. we don't know about. But the bottom line is, is like what, how normal is it for a 45 year old and up man to start having erectile dysfunction, even if they don't have a belly? I mean, cause this is the stuff that, you know, I'm talking to guys all the time now that, you know, it, it just, it's, it's not hard. Yes. Yes. Well, we, statistically 50% by men by age 50 have ED. Right. And only half of those men have an identifiable problem, such as diabetes, Unreal. high blood pressure, right. uh, atherosclerosis. The rest of them appear to be, no, you know, normal. Otherwise, uh, normal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, we have, 
So it's 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 an enormous problem. I, obviously, there are, there are psychological issues that enter into it as well too. Sure. Uh, because relationships between men and women have changed significantly. Yeah. Uh, and and I think I think that. AI and porn are play, you know, have porn, played, porn, you know, porn is definitely porn is definitely fucking people up because it rewires the dopaminergic and serotonergic pathways in the brain. It also That's just creates happening. expectations that are absurd. I mean, if, you know, if you know, True. if a woman, I'll tell you an anecdote uh, if you don't mind. I saw Jin, sure. Jin, back when my, my daughter's now twenty eight, but she, when she was uh, seventeen or eighteen years old in high school, she had a bunch of girlfriends over, uh, and, I, and I'm a good cook, so I, you know, kind of cook and fill the, the, the ladies and. They start complaining about how the boys at Bozeman High School seem to have sm- all have small penises. I was listening. I said, I, "How can that be?" I said, so what, "What do you mean they have small penises?" Well, you know, they were comparing these guys to porn stars. Well, my, right. I point out to these girls that well, the boys at Bozeman High School probably think all the girls are flat chested, right? And have, right. Have, have bad booty. So I mean, you, you guys are you know you you're you're, you're looking at, at an unreal. Well, it's a real world, but looking at a, a unrealistic. World, but, yeah. yeah, that's unreal, unrealistic. Yeah. Uh, and- well, I, I mean, but to what you said, I mean, and I don't want to rabbit hole on here. That that's actually true though, too, because of the contamination in utero of um, due to birth control. I mean, I mean, there's studies and science and all this stuff out there, but men, as you know, are becoming less masculine. Yes. And on top of the environmental bullshit with the you know the hyper masculine, toxic masculine, all this other bullshit, the trans movement. I mean, I, again, I don't want to make this like discussion that you and I could go to talk about. <laughs> But it's insane what has happened to to men. I mean, I literally did a podcast last night to talk about what's you know happened in Japan with six million men Hategori, where they literally have opted out of being sexual. Uh, you know, they have the incel population. It's, you know, happen- it's happening here too, though, Jay. It is, know. Dude. I know. Uh, it's I, insane. I, I, I meet I meet guys in the thirties who don't are have attractive. They're making decent incomes. They're in good shape. I see them at the gym. They they don't have sex. Have maybe maybe they've gone to date once or twice a year. Uh, they've given up. It's uh, insane. It's it, so. But women is, women don't yeah. know what their natural sexualities are. I, I, we're jumping around a lot. I'm going to jump ahead to something I want to bring up at the end. Sure, sure. Which is in addition to the firm tech device for men to measure their objectively measure their sexuality. We've tested on 38 women a similar device for women that we're calling Eros Tech for now. That's awesome. And they pay, pay, pay published about this in the fall. We're basically putting sensors over the clitoris. And it's inside the vagina to measure clitoral health. So women can then measure the impact of all things that men that do, diseases, medications, sure, sure, sure. et cetera. But women have it worse than men because premenopausal women take drugs that men don't do. Premenopausal women taking hormones and they're taking SSRI antidepressants. And they're exposed to all the environmental issues that, 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 that you indicated. Yeah. We, we have a generation of women, two generations of women, that don't even know what their sexuality is naturally. It's would insane. Be like. It's literally insane. Yeah. It's insane. I know you have to do so much research and work. I mean, it, uh, what I was going to add to that, what you said though, about the guys in the thirties, you, you probably know this because of who you are, but maybe you don't. I mean, it's so mind blowing in 2021 and 2022 in the United States, 50% of men under the age of 30 did not have sex a single time. 50%. In the last two years, I mean, when you hear that kind of stuff and you remember like you and I, right, in our 20s, and all we wanted to do was have sex. <laughs> oh, I haven't changed very much. Uh, the, I mean, the only thing that's really changed for me is the refractory period. I suspect the same thing happened happen for you. I, I don't think I really could accomplish anything until I hit my 40s and my refractory period right. went to like twice a day. Then, right. I, then, I could, then I could actually accomplish things. True, true. It's funny you say that. But I mean, it, I mean, Doc, it's just mind-blowing to even comprehend this kind of stuff. But again, you know, it's not a... It's not good. It's not a good harbinger of where we're going. I mean, it really does seem like we're forcing, you know, transhumanism, the merging of man machine, you know, for some sort of like AI cyborg. I mean, I know I'm not going to do that, but I mean, I, you look at a lot of these kids and they, you know, they take these surveys and they ask them, you know, are you, are you about becoming bionic? And fuck half of them will probably say yes. Well, how many, how many people are going to have, have AI companions in the future that I choose over? Don't, don't anyway. even, don't even. <laughs> Go there. Get me out of here first, man. I, well, let's, yeah. let's get back to dick data. Um, so, <laughs> yes, please, dick data. Yeah, so, what, we, what we've done with with front, my, my wife calls it a dick bit um, because dick bit, it's, that's awesome. We're not providing men with data that that previous was impossible. So, yeah. if a man goes to if if you or I or a man goes to a, a doctor or your sexologist and says, "Gee." 
I like my sex. I, I like my sexual uh, performance where it is right now, and I want to keep it where it is. Or I have a problem. The doctors really just have opinion. I mean, they can they can you know a urologist can wave an ultrasound over your penis in their office, right. but what do men really care about? I mean, I don't I don't know about you, but I don't get the ultrasound. I don't get hard on in the, in the urologist's office or any doctor's office. So. I want to know what's going on while I'm having sex or trying to have sex. So that's, that's, that's what we've provided for men. So if a man can measure the duration and furnace of, of his directions while he's having sex, there's so much that he can measure. So I hear how, here's how it works at both extremes. And this one of these things relates to the issue that you were talking about before. If a man is having erections while they're, dream, while they're sleeping, and by the way, every episode of REM sleep appears is accompanied by an erection. Uh, but a man having erections while he's, while he's sleeping and can't get it up with a partner. The problems in the relationship, or alcohol, or drugs, something, 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 something of that nature. That's called psychogenic ED, and that's really valuable. And we we have uh, two urologists that have used our device uh, to screen men before their men who want who think they need implant surgery to fix their erections, and realize these men have 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 psychogenic ED. They don't they don't need they don't need the surgery. And at the other extreme. Um, if a man, and we've had this with a couple of young men in their 20s, they, both of them are bodybuilders and taking too many, too many steroids. Right, sure. If a man is having one nocturnal erection or a, week, a couple of weak nocturnal erections, has struggles to get it up with his partner, that guy's a, that guy's a medical you know, you know, you know, problem. So sure. the device is really, really viable. We have, we have men that are using our technology to titrate their dose of antidepressants. I, I, I despise the whole class of SSRI. Oh, absolutely, SSRI all of them. Yeah, cases. horrible. Well, but, well, so, well, with the psychogenic ED, though, you're you're really, really unpacking some amazing stuff here. Like, what do you tell them? Like, hey, dude, you got to get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> no. You need strange, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we have had, uh, you know, we've had two breakups that we're aware of. Um, <laughs> But I mean, is but, there? I mean, obviously, I'm joking and jesting, but maybe I'm not. I mean, like, what is the solution when you when you have that? I mean, is that like, hey, you you got you and the you and the wife, or you and the husband, or you and the what other the other sex partner have to have conversations now? Like, you need to talk, you get yeah, into therapy. I mean, yeah, if people need to talk about what's going on. Uh, That's pretty awesome and, stuff. This, so I mean, it this just, is amazing. It, it kind of, but it's it what we're doing demystifies it to some degree. Sure, uh, totally, totally, yeah. But I mean, you would be, it's interesting. And again, you would know, I mean, like, what is the percentage of men that have psychogenic ED? We don't know. Yeah. I suspect it's high. Jesus. I mean, the, the, other, the other issue is that, that the urologists don't get is the fading erection. So right. what, um, you know, it's like we talk about ED. Guy goes to a doctor or a sexologist or a therapist with ED. And the thinking is, he can't, I can't get it up. But that's not the case with most men. Most men can get it up, but they lose it. Right. If their erection fades, they have, a ven they have a venous leak problem. Now, the venous leak problem could be due to significant arterial or, or, or vascular you know, disease, which happens to all of us. Everyone gets venous leak as, as, no as, doubt. as they get older. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, or it could be boredom. Right. Or it could be uh, – and I, I want to talk about the impact of the ring upon upon my marriage and, sure. and a couple of people confirm this in a moment. But so the, uh, what a cock ring does is, is it retains blood in the penis. So a good cock ring will, will address the venous, the venous. You'll get an erection, but it's harder to lose that erection. And the urologists yeah. think, Oh, here's his urologist or the sexologist. We'll try PD five medication. Cialis yeah. and Viagra being yeah. the most common ones. But they put more blood in the penis, but they don't keep it there. But older men's issue is actually not getting the blood in as much, although unless they, have, unless they have bad vascular disease, but keeping the blood there because right. they have vascular disease on the other side. So, uh, and the penis, like the clitoris, its function is about is about smooth muscle. You can't make right. your dick any harder in the gym. So when people talk about pelvic floor exercises, but they're mistake, and, and that's important. It's, it's important to have a good sure. pelvic floor tone. But that doesn't keep blood in the penis. Right. So uh, you have to the, – the solution for many men is mechanical one. And the, and the urologists think PD-5, oh, that doesn't work. Try, try a, a pump. Most guys don't like vacuum pumps. They're kind of, they're kind of weird. They yeah. do work. But you, a man has to do. be yeah, they disciplined. Do. 
A man has to be disciplined. So I'm committing to this for three months and I'm going to pump regularly and I'm going to follow a regimen. Most people aren't like that, Jay, as you know. Most no. people want, they want to take a pill and they want, they want a quick solution. I, so I, I mean, ring. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it just to, 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 to keep that in that vein, like I use one along with the Phoenix and everybody in my audience knows that. And of course, rings and I'm excited to get yours. Uh, I actually, and today's that day, I actually sometimes I'm like, fuck, I can't leave my penis pump in my shower because my house cleaner's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Should I move it and put it underneath my sink and my cabinet? But I'm serious. But now I'm like, ah, fuck it. She knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's true. You, most guys are not going to pump diligently um, in the way that you have to. Same thing with like using, you know, the v, the Phoenix, you know, and I don't want to rabbit right. hole, but it's, it's absolutely true. And the cock ring is the answer. A comfortable cock ring is the answer. Exactly. So that's, you know, which can get back to, because the other part of the cock ring problem that I wanted to solve was not just to make one that could be worn for a long period of time and one that could be put on when you don't have an erection, could be worn discreetly. But I also wanted to put up, to come up with a cock ring that made your orgasm more intense. So wow. Wow. when I was thinking about this, you know, what we men ejaculate, when we, when we have an orgasm, we ejaculate. If you can prolong the ejaculation without choking it off, right, you can have a better orgasm. So I experimented. Well, there, there were six testers. You could have been one of them if I knew you. But oh. there were six testers. We, we, we experimented with different degrees of tightness of the elastomer to, with a goal of achieving at least a 50%, in, minimum 50% increase in the ejaculatory time. So my ejaculation time goes from four seconds to six to eight seconds wow, with, with, my, with my cock ring. That means my orgasm is more intense. It's not as, as intense as, as a vibrator for my wife, but for a guy, it's, 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 it's intense. Nope. I actually have some, uh, and we're coming out with a tighter one called a max PR because the, um, uh, one of the super Atten's good friends, uh, sent mid sock from, uh, Dr. Joel Kaplan. They make pumps. He said yeah, to me, Gee, that's, the, that's the pump that I use, by the way. Cool. He said to me, why don't you come up with a tighter version? And I actually, there's a, there's a CEO of the largest sex toy distributor in the United States. I'll leave it at that. Not, he wouldn't want me to mention his name. Uh, he also, challenged me to come up with a tighter version because that, that's what they want. Uh, and, and I did. It's called the Max PR. We're coming out with that in, in a week. And it's an awesome toy. I'll send that Dude, to you. I'll send I that want one that to you as well. Don't even hesitate to not send that to me. <laughs> but, you know, so one of my, one of my goals with this, I, the, the data is profoundly valuable. One of my goals with, with this company is to mainstream cock rings for men. Because yeah. straight men are stupid about this. Awesome, man. So what, one of the jokes we have at, at the booth, a three-hour medical show like the American Neurology Association or the International Society for Sexual Medicine is that the uh, – how do you tell the difference between a gay urologist and a straight urologist? You ask them one question. Do you use a cock ring? The straight urologist like Superman and Kryptonite. The straight urologist says, oh, wow, I, I don't need that. Of course, you shouldn't need it. You want it. The gay urologist says, uh, yeah, like last night, you got a better one. So exactly. we, we're also doing a study internally here. And we will publish this data probably in the winter. We're measuring D2 message time. So D2 message time is the time it takes to lose an erection because the time it takes to lose an erection, if it takes longer, it means you're holding more blood in your penis. The more blood you're holding in your penis, the more intense sensation is for you. Erection time is, has too many variables. Is it with a partner? You're watching porn. You're taking, you know, but D2 message time, don't do anything after you have an orgasm and then cl clock it. And we're doing it with four variables. One, nothing. Two, our cock ring, because we, we do want to promote it. Three, to Dalafil or, 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 or Sedala, a silence right. of, of, of Viagra. Yep. And, and four, combined therapy, both a ring and a PD-5 medication. And it's a whole question. Which one, Jay, do you think is best? Number four. <laughs> Number four, yeah. But it's, it's, it, it, it's a... <laughs> So if I take the Dal – one of the fun things with this too is you can start to experiment with, with things for yourself. So I'll, yeah. I'll send you the tech ring as well too so you can play around with it. Awesome. Uh, with Tadalafil, my erection – with nothing, my erection goes down by like, like 34 seconds on average. Yeah. With Tadalafil, it's, it's three and a half minutes, three, three minutes, 20-something 20 seconds. Combined, th combined my ring, the, especially the Max PR and Tadalafil, I can be hard for eight minutes. I've hit 10 minutes. Wow. Now, by heart, I mean getting totally flaccid. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I might yeah. not be. I might be here. Yeah, yeah. Now, now think about the the impact of that 
for a young co- guy That's who might massive. come too quickly is, massive. is, is awesome. Massive. For my, for, my, for my wife and I, and she's here in the room. She doesn't mind me talking about this. She's pointed out as well, too. It is a – I'm, I'm, I'm going to use a word that young people don't use, don't use today and should use. It's romantic. Because if I have an erection, uh, a long-lasting erection, after I come, I don't need to keep thrusting in order to satisfy my wife. That's right. I, but my, I'm still in bed. We're still horizontal. We're still talking. We're still intimate because the male mindset has come and done, especially with this stupid machine nearby. <laughs> so the male mind says, "Baby, go get me a turkey sandwich." Uh, or, or the who has anyone texted me while we while we're, while we're, while we're fucking? Or uh, <laughs> I, I want a drink. Or what are we gonna do next? Basically. So, but if I if if I if I'm there with an erection, we're we're talking. It's you know it, it's uh, uh, it's romantic. Yeah. Um, it also has, I mean, one of the personal benefits for us is that we're now making love in positions that we haven't made love in for years. One of the things that's that people awful. don't like to talk about with sex is boredom. Right, 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 right. So there are positions that I find to be utterly boring. Uh, and, but I, that's not fair to my, my wife. Sure. It isn't so because she because she she enjoys them because of the if, feeling they get. Yeah, exactly. Right. If I if I'm not if I ha, if I have if I have an erection because I because of the ring, I ain't bored. That's so right. there are positions, the three most common positions for intercourse. We now which we kind of had abandoned because I would get bored. I would lose my erection or, or lose sure, or lose, sure, or sure, lose sure. interest. Sure. Um, missionary position. Right. You know, having se- having sex from behind. You know, I, right. I've done this ten thousand times. But, but, but if I'm, that. Right, but if I'm but if I'm if I'm a guy with an erection who has who has intense sensation, oh, you want to do this? I love you. I'll Let's do this for ten, fifteen minutes. Let's Let's go, exactly, baby. yeah. And that's that's, that's awesome. been that's really been great. We've even she's even demonstrated that we can have an an argument during sex. And I don't lose my erection, so uh, because the ring is so effective. So I don't that's know, actually, Jay. What, that's actually kinky, bro. Just just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. She's literally it is. talking shit to you while she's like using you at the same time. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a marriage that will last, man. A uh, uh, happy wife, long life, right? That's the way it works, yeah. man. Um, how, how have I how, how have I used the data personally? Yeah. Um, so several ways. Uh, because I was probably because involved with the startup. I started getting high blood pressure back in October. Uh, my internist recommended I take lisinopril. <clears throat> my erection went from 100% firmness to 85% firmness. Now, I didn't notice it. I mean, you wouldn't notice that much of a difference. Right. But I, I didn't like, you know, it, it was, it basically was like a leading indicator of a problem. So I stopped taking the medication. I switched to Losartan. The problem, you know, the problem went away. Uh, and, and, and now that we sold 8,000 units, my blood pressure is all better. I don't take, take any medicine. But I've used it to, um, to, to for testosterone. So I, I, I've, the, I noticed that, uh, you know, talking to my friends, your age on, on up, it's like everyone's taking testosterone. Of course. So I thought, okay, I'm going to take testosterone. I asked my, uh, my advisory board, what do you got, urologist, what do you predict is going to happen? And they said, you should have more nocturnals, they should last longer, um, and your refractory period should decrease. None of those things happened. What was the wow. benefit of testosterone? I now, since my... <laughs> exercise it was amazing yeah can, stronger drive stronger energy yeah. better better and the, the energy is great i mean I, you know something i went from like you know without pushing it i went from you know bent pressing you know 190 to 220 over That's like awesome. six weeks yeah and i can cur- i was curling 60 pounds opposed to 50 and that was without trying it was i wasn't like trying yeah. to, you know, hit. I, I mean but the, the, the true the true benefit that men see in testosterone is the dopamine signaling right so you get better cognition you have better energy sure muscle comes if you lift and train and stuff like that but that's where it really comes in it's it, it doesn't really enhance sexual functioning much at all it really does yeah the other thing i've used it for is um is trying to um is playing around with with uh, pd5 medications sure. what's the right dose yeah. Uh, and what you know, do you so think the right dose is? So I use, so, so, and again, I'm very open about this on my show. I use a five, I use five milligrams on my lifting days, which is three days a week. Uh, so there is, yeah, there is receptor yeah. attenuation with, with Cialis. Um, you can absolutely, uh, create, you know, a dependence if you use too high of a dosage. So, you know, we go back and forth on this, but like for me, for sex, 15 milligrams. And that's like, if I know I'm going away to Vegas or something crazy and my wife and I are going to, 
you know, enjoy and partake a long time. But what do you think the perfect dose is from your experimentation? Well, I think it's, it's got to vary, by, you know, man to man. So I, 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 play, yeah. I played around with 5, 10, 20, 5, yeah. 10, 15, I didn't do 15. I did 5, 10, and 20. Um, and I was measuring, for me, I was measuring the, the D2 message time because that's sure. the most, time phase expression, that's the most objective. 20 was actually unpleasant for me. I don't I think it's because I don't have significant ED and I, yeah. and I don't yeah, yeah. want to have an erection. Um, that lasts too that, long. That lasts too long. Exactly. But, but <laughs> Pretty impressive. My, yeah. No, it, it bordered, it bordered on, on that. And, and you know, my wife would be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, <laughs> like, you know and okay, baby, I got this. I got this. Right. I mean, at, 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 you know, at my age, certain, you know, even masturbation gets to be boring. It's like, nah, I gotta get, <laughs> I gotta get to sleep. So, so, so I, I'm basically doing what you're doing. I, I, I have found that, um, that five that five milligrams every other day is yeah. is about the is about the right dose. I don't I don't need it, but it does produce the longest lasting D two message period for me. That's comfortable. Uh, I didn't notice any much difference between five and ten. So why you know why take ten and, tw and twenty? On the other hand, was on you know, unple you know I'm, unpleasant. I'm with you, man. It's five and, and fifteen, and you know the five also from a training perspective does increase nitric oxide. It's the best pre workout drug slash supplement that you can a human being can take and look the vasodilation improving endothelial function i mean a, a low dose of cialis is amazing for health for all, all cause health i mean there's so much science out there on that yeah. uh, but i'm with you you know again like everything you know what goes up must come down you've got to regulate your usage you can't become addicted to it you can't become dependent on it a lot of guys i don't, are, I don't, I don't want to suppress my, my, my natural production either i don't know about the imp implications of that long term and no no one does yet uh, well, so, well, so, the, so that's a good point. So I, I don't know if you know, doctor, I, I should connect you guys if you don't, but Dr. Nathan Bryan, you know, makes a very, very powerful, um, no, no. nitric oxide, natural supplement, like the stuff that Susan sells is nice, but that's not what he sells. And his whole comment is you should combine his nitric oxide supplement with low dose Cialis. And he has science to prove the synergies. It's pretty amazing stuff. I mean, I've actually yeah. written an article about it, but I use that. He has lozenges that you can take first thing in the morning if you're about to get it on or at night or whatever. And they're, they're very flavorful. There's, they're, they're actually keto friendly, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's pretty interesting because I'm with you. You want to maintain natural nitric oxide formation um, as much as possible as you, especially yes, send, me the, send me the information. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, gonna connect you guys. I'm definitely going to connect you guys. There's a synergy here. So here's, 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 here's some other things I've, I, I've measured. So I, you know, I can actually, using this to, using the device, I can actually see what amount of alcohol. You know, there's a point when you're drinking where you can still get hard and you can't ejaculate. I can nail, you can, you can wow. nail that down exactly with this. Wow. Uh, we're actually we're thinking next year we're going to come come out with an, uh, up with an addition to the app where you can actually could, could actually get an alert on your phone that says, "Hey Jay, it's That's your it. anniversary. Uh, two more cocktails." It ain't happening at all. Or <laughs> that's awesome, man. And also, um, so I travel. I travel a fair amount internationally. Sometimes I'll take um, Ambien, for, you know, uh, Zolpidem, you know, for sleep. Yeah, of course. Wipe, wipes out the nocturnals. So if actually, it's actually made me cut cut back on the amount that I take. Because I we told me before about doctors stupidly prescribing medications one sure. you know one size fits all. Yeah. They say for an adult male, it's ten milligrams. 2.5 milligrams will do, uh, and, you know, and without 2.5 milligrams, I have nocturnals. If I take five, I have, I, you know, I have no nocturnals. Wow. Unbelievable. That's awesome. You guys are, this is so cool that you guys would be able to measure this kind of data and obviously truly help men. Um, it's a really, I mean, this has been such an awesome eye opening podcast, even for me. And I'm definitely going to give you my address after this. Cause I definitely want you to send me the newest one. I mean, sure. I, obviously I'm always, like you said, looking for a better cock ring. I mean, what man isn't, um, I'm, I'm totally with you, by the way, I don't even feel like, I mean, you know, I don't want to say anything and get myself in trouble, but I mean, for men, it, it is, you know, we are obviously, uh, genetically here to procreate and mix our seed. And so yeah. when you're with in a long-term monogamous relationship, there is that boredom issue that comes in. And I would definitely say that it's almost, a, it's almost essential when you're in a marriage, you know, 10, 15 plus years to have a cock ring. I, I mean, because like you said, I mean, it, it, the boredom is, it, it, it's a, it's a biological, you know, inevitability. Right. Well, the boredom does go away if you have a hard on. So, because, because the, the usual reaction to boredom is to, is, is to lose the, is to lose the erection. Right. Uh, and that, it's, so it's, 
I mean, the first time this, that we noticed this, like like a year ago, February, I'm, I'm in Montana. It's cold here. It snows. Uh, my wife and I are uh, having sex. We're like both away, like three or four minutes away from, an or- from orgasming. And suddenly she starts talking about some fight she had with her mother. Uh, and I, I don't know about you, but, you know, one of the common complaints that men have about w- women, gay guys don't have this complaint, is <laughs> in the middle of sex, they just start talking about something else. Uh, and they like, you know, want to redesign the bedroom or something that happened the with the kids or brain, something. Bro, the female brain, bro. The female brain. So she tells me in the middle of sex, well, gee, um, I think I left the garage door open and it's snowing outside. Well, we store some things in the garage that are kind of valuable. So, of course, it's the, it's the man's obligation. She, she, her reaction is not right. to spring out of bed and fix the problem herself. Right. No, Go the expectation is that the man's – that is that the hunter – the hunter is going to do right. this. You know, the man's right. – so right. I, I, you know, I – downstairs my loins are girded but they're girded with my cock ring right uh, i closed the garage door now ordinarily my reaction after 30 then it was like 33 as a marriage 34 as a marriage would have been what the fuck you can't keep that thought to yourself for five minutes i mean come, I, you know, we're fucking done tonight and i'm pissed off that would have been my my, my, rea- my reaction a, 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 a gentler soul like you might have been okay honey sure dear whatever anyway <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> I, gentle yeah so i I, I close the garage door, uh, and, I'm, and as I'm heading upstairs, she says, oh, you know that, uh, that uh, Añejo that you, that you just got for your birthday? Can you, pour, can you pour me a shot of that on ice and put some lime in? Now, that would, ordinarily, that would have been in a second, what the fuck? Get your own fucking tequila. <laughs> because, uh, but instead, I'm a guy with a heart on. I come upstairs with the, with the tequila, with the Añejo in my hand, and, I, and my, I'm like... At seventy five percent erect because I got the ring on, and she laughs at me and said, "Puncture," <laughs> because she because her, her point to me was because because not a, a guy with a hard on. It's like, hey, I'm 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 no longer in that WTF. And was like, okay, let's start all over again. And I'm not right. obviously I'll some tequila too, and I'm in a good mood because I'm a guy with a hard on. That's uh, awesome. And so that was that was that was interesting. <laughs> and I, we've had other people re- re- report that you know, you know similar benefit. But on the medical side, there's a condition called – because I just got a long complimentary email from a guy a couple of days ago. There's a condition called climacteria. Have you ever heard of that? No. Well, um, the, the majority of men who have prostate surgery oh. en- end up urinating when they climax. Yeah. But, well, that's kind of a turnoff for both, par- for both parties. And this guy, um, he went to, he got, his urologist in the United States wanted to operate on, on him again. He didn't want to get operated on. He goes online and finds a woman in Perth, uh, Melissa Barrett, who specializes in penile rehabilitation, and she suggests that he try my ring. She, 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 she read about my ring online. That's awesome. He to, so he, he, he uses the ring, and he now can get a blowjob. Wow! Without pissing his wife off, literally pissing her off. And now we, and, and now we have, we have three guys. We, we, we've had two. He he posts. This gets posted. If we had two other guys contact us, you know, one for those guys, for guys who have had prostate problems, knowing that data is really important because they can see what in the in the rehabilitation regimen is working. What's the right dose of a PD five medication? Um, what are the treatment? You know, are the treatments working? But they now have this 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 tool that will that will help them. They all, these guys also have venous leak venous leak issues, sure. Uh, so as well as cl- uh, climacteria, and the you know and the rings are really helpful. Dude, that's amazing. I mean, that's literally amazing. I, I was laughing just thinking like, well, you know, there are forms of porn where I think climateria is probably celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you about Project O. Because that's, that's actually how I got into this. Please do. So in 2015, I sold an emergency medicine company. And I, I'm, uh, I don't know whether you ride horses, Jay, but I'm an, I, I, people tell me I ride like a, tw- a 12-year-old. I say I ride like a 20-year-old, but they, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, so I sometimes I have this illusion that I'm a centaur, uh, and it's, it can be a dangerous illusion. So I was 2016. I was uh, riding down a trail. Someone had cut a tree that had fallen over a trail so that you could walk underneath it, but you couldn't ride underneath it. It was like jousting without armor. I broke six ribs and six vertebrae. Ooh. And as I was lying on the ground, the first thing I did was check. This I want to put out there. I call it the cock up sign. If you ever think you injured your spinal cord, but you cock up your big toe you'd be able to urinate, defecate, and fornicate. <laughs> it's, it's, for me, that's more, more important than checking out my breathing and my, whether I'm bleeding out. Cock up, I'm okay. So just remember that if you ever think you had a spinal cord injury. UDF, right? 
UDF. So I'm lying, so I was think thought occurred to me what's how what's going on with controlling with neuromodulation with like a plant electro by a nerve human sexuality since I was in medical school. Well, there were five papers that claimed that by doctors that claimed that they were able to put an electro by the cavernous nerve, everyone's favorite nerve that no one's heard about. The nerves involved in 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 orgasms. And they were able to produce erections and orgasms in men who had multiple sclerosis or spinal cord injuries. Uh, I tried it out on two rams, you know, male sheep. Sure. We call it ram charging. We got um, uh, we got urinate, we got ejaculation, but we also got defecation, urination. So it wasn't really bedroom friendly unless we're in certain niche markets, maybe Provincetown, San Francisco, <laughs> London. Uh, getting back to your comment about piss Dude. before, but. You had the, to do that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that from the show. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That was great. Keep going. Uh, uh, so, I, so I thought, well, let's, let's try it out on, on me. So I had, um, I had a, uh, your, your urologist friend in plant electrode, <laughs> we, and we got nothing. I, 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 think, I don't think these guys – I think the these guys' research is bullshit. I don't think – I don't think we actually know how erections are produced neurophysiologically in humans. My wife likes to think it's Aphrodite, you know, or, v- or Venus. Well, right. I, I don't. I, it's everything in the body ultimately comes down to electricity. Yeah, exactly. And I don't think we know what's really going on in humans because, granted, I could have, if I could have gone down to, oh, it could have gone down to, you know, some impoverished country and test this on 20 people. But I'm representative of men in general when it comes to neuro. Ner- to neuroanatomy, you know, to neurophysiology, and, and sure. that we tried both side, both um, capitis nerves on both on both sides, you know, and got got zero response. I felt not, I felt nothing. So I don't think we really know how erections are produced. I'd like to, I'd like to get back. I call the project O for obvious reasons. I, I, I'd awesome. like to figure that out because if you could, but if that would allow people to have to to one decrease the refractory period, men, particularly, yeah. but it'll certainly allow people to have. An active sexual life into the nineties. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If we accomplish that, well, if you want to go deeper and woo, I can give you some books to read about that. I mean, basically, the theory or the the belief, the knowing, depending on your perspective, is like with women. When women have an orgasm, they're literally tapping into universal energy. They're tapping into like a field. I mean, you know, you start talking about kundalini, and you start talking about like the ability that women have when they have this powerful orgasm. I mean, my wife is literally able to have kundalini orgasms and she channels energy bro that is so insane like i remember the very first time that she had one with me and i thought that she brought some sort of a entity into this <laughs> dimension because they're so strong i mean the energy they channel is insane but you're right i mean your theory of like what happens like in sex it's like you really do tap into some sort of like source field energy signature that's so po- powerful and so profound that we can't measure it or even truly understand it yeah it's, it's incredible yeah well i'm looking forward to hearing your reaction to the maximum performance ring dude please send that to me um well let me just throw your stuff up here real quick sure. um so guys and gals obviously amazing uh doc interview we had here today and as always please support the people that come on the show you can go to myfirmtech.com uh, and buy his technology, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, I've heard great things from Susan. You can also follow him on Facebook at Dr. Elliot Justin. Um, Doc, I'm going to give you the final word. What is coming beyond this new Max performance uh, from you in the future as far as uh, measuring data and just continuing to enhance sexology? Sure. Well, the big, the big uh, next big product will be the product for women that we're calling Eros Tech right now. We tested on 38 women. Uh, the, the research will be published this, presented this fall, published this winter. I'm looking to, I, I need to raise money for that. Uh, and so if anyone's interested they, in investing in that. How do they wear that though? Do, this is a wearable sure. just like a cock ring, it's, right? It's, it's, it's a wearable. Uh, we, ha- we will add, add a vibrator eventually because you got to have a vibrator. But, sure. <laughs> but for, uh, and we actually have tested the vibrator separately. But basically imagine something that um, has the memory. It's, I, it's not, it's more it's like a stream C shape. So, the entrance is not like this with women. I'm gesturing my fingers. I don't know it's visible to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the pubic, the, the pubic symphysis is the is the pubic bone of women ha, is the same. Where the woman is is has big labia, small labia, big clitoris, right. small clitoris. That bone's the same. Sure. Uh, you angle that bone. So imagine something that a piece of silicone has that it's kind of shaped like a U that has that memory. It's coated with a soft elastomer. 
over the clitoris, there are two sensors. Inside the, inside the vagina, behind the pubic sniff, is another sensor. Uh, using those sensors, we measure um, increased pulse, increased temperature, increased pulse amplitude, increased tissue oxygenation that are indicative of clitoral arousal. And utilizing that, we'll be able to count nocturnal clitoral erections. No one has measured that since fucking Masters and Johnson back in the, wow. the 70s. Yeah. Uh, and it's our thesis. Uh, and super out and others you know, share this as well too, that women have not, just the way men have nocturnal clitoral erections, of course. women have them as well too. Uh, and and then one during sex won't be able to measure the impact of medications, disease, et cetera, upon the sexual performance. That should be uh, a trans, that will transform gynecology and sexology for women. And we w- w- and we intend to come out with that device uh, next year. And it's really just a question of, of, of a money raise, Jay. Wow. All right. Well, we can talk off air about that. Um, Doc, sure. man, profound show. I mean, I'm so grateful. I don't do a lot of interviews with this type of topic and this subject matter, but you were amazing on the show. And I think that, you know, I mean, I don't think I know that this is going to benefit a lot of uh, men and of course their partners and hopefully females uh, moving forward. So again, guys and gals support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell show, go to my and pick up his newest and obviously also the the uh, previous versions of their cock ring. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.